This is a mosaic of wilderness and subsistence agriculture, where a million people farm on marginal land exposed to seasonal variability that is the hallmark of climate change. This is also elephant territory. An estimated 140,000 elephants, more than a third of Africa's remaining population, call this area home. People and animals share this landscape and the futures of both are linked to water. Now there is a plan to drop national borders and allow everyone to roam without passports across this region where five countries meet in the heart of Southern Africa. It is a plan that helps Southern Africa's water-stressed countries deal with the effects of climate change by restoring the ecosystems of two major river basins. Assisted by the South African Peace Parks Foundation, the five African countries of Angola, Botswana, Namibia, Zambia, and Zimbabwe agreed in August 2011 to create the Kavango Zambezi Transfrontier Conservation Area. Called the Casa Park, it is 29 million hectares, an area about the size of Italy. This new plan creates a framework to protect and share these nations' precious water resources and combines the interests of wildlife and people toward a common goal. The big objectives of the TFCA and of the Peace Parks Foundation is to facilitate a process where you look at the management of integrated ecosystems across international boundaries. The foundation is a facilitator for a dialogue between all of the stakeholders in the region. We help governments in each of those countries initiate a process where you bring together private sector, communities and government around one table and say, okay, but what do you think is the future of this area? This integrated approach to conservation is vital for semi-arid countries facing the combined challenges of food and water security at a time of climate change. It is also vital for protecting the migration routes of the wildlife, and both of these elements are essential for creating sustainable livelihoods in the area. The animals, they are very important because they make our area beautiful and they keep the ecosystem going, and also they bring in the tourists, thereby giving money to the community. One of the pillars of the Kaza project is the official protection of the Zambezi and Kavango rivers. Well, a transboundary river basin, the way I define it, is uh, when water, the natural flow of water, intersects an artificial jurisdictional barrier. The former colonial powers used rivers as borders, whereas the previous pre-colonial dispensation used rivers as means of transport, as means to connect people. Africa inherited the borders that were created during the colonial era, but the Kaza will break down these artificial boundaries and apply a management system that treats it as a whole, helping to secure these two great watersheds from the ravages of climate change, deforestation, and overconsumption. If our national economy is a wholly owned subsidiary of our national hydrology, then our global economy is a wholly owned subsidiary of our global ecosystem. So ecosystems matter because actually this is the life support system provider for planet Earth. So both these river catchments are unfortunately located right in the subtropics and that is specifically the part of Southern Africa that is projected to dry most. This is also the region of Southern Africa that is projected to warm very rapidly. And these are absolutely drastic rises in the surface temperature. The area is already experiencing climactic changes that are making farming more difficult. Max is from the Etza community in the northwest of the Okavango Delta in Botswana. Before people could rely on farming, nowadays they, they can't because uh, the rainfall here is more variable. 
we used not to have rainfall in winter like June, July. For the past two years, we have experienced rainfall in those months. That shows that the climate has changed a lot. Community conservation systems in Botswana, like the Jokocha Trust, where Max works, are being used to shape the creation of the Kaza. It's very important that uh, we implement the Kaza plan so that we can try and manage our resource here. It's not just about wildlife and conservation. It includes communities and rural farmers in the overall land use plan. It can be uh, community areas. It can be game management areas, it can even be agricultural land, providing that whatever is practiced is done in a responsible manner, not to the detriment of the environment in the long term. By creating financially beneficial alternatives to farming, the CASA plan creates an appropriate, whole system approach to sustainable land use. The tourism industry is already the biggest employer in the area. Everybody involved hopes that the creation of the Casa will bring in even more visitors and in this way bring jobs, training and a new future to the people who live in and around the boundaries of this vast park. Victoria Falls is the park's centerpiece. Here the Zambezi River flows into the Batoka Gorge along the border with Zambia and Zimbabwe through Mozambique and out into the Indian Ocean. The falling waters will take months to get there, and on their way, they will sustain millions of people. As climate change causes this region to warm up and dry out, the very lives of the many people who rely on these two great rivers are in the balance. One of the important things that the Kaza type of thinking will help bring about is a reinforcing of the human rights of those very marginalized groups by the emergence of uh, a transboundary management of shared natural resources such as water, such as landscapes. As it starts to face the reality of a changing climate, these forward-thinking ideas in transboundary management are being accepted and understood on a regional level here in Southern Africa. Instead of having a park where the community is asked to move out of the area, you have a system where the community remains in their area and they are given the rights to manage the area and manage the wildlife to gain an income to benefit their community. The elephants have already started to expand their range into the new areas of the park, taking advantage of new water sources in Angola during times of rainfall, or keeping close to the riverine highways in Botswana when rains are less certain. And as such, they are a living example of how best to take advantage of a variable climate.